and boom. Yeah, all right. All right. Three, two, one. There we go. Audio synced. Oh, yes. I feel so syncopated now. All right. Today what we're doing, uh, as you can see from the recording screen capture, is we are trying out for some more ACX audiobooks. But this time I set the feature to only show the romance and erotica. Oh, boy. So we have 72 titles, so let's just start clicking through them and see if any of them make our penis go from zero to hero. Uh, we'll, we'll be rating it based on if we feel anything in our downstairs. Oh, boy. Virgin Tribute, a dark sci-fi romance. This is a darker romance, but not nearly as dark as some. It is set in post-apocalyptic Seattle. Ooh, okay. Seattle. Ooh, rainy. Spooky. Yeah, rainy. Um, Mossy. A tremendous staying power. Okay, and proven very popular. Yeah, okay. Well, let's let's uh, download this script. Open that shit up. Whatever, we'll just stick with this. Huh? Open that shit up. All right, well, let's let's see here. Let's see. Oh, let's go straight to the. All right, who wants to do this one? I, I can, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, you do this. Where one. should I start? Uh, somewhere in here. Okay. He turned her loose, and Reagan managed to crawl into position. Is that Reagan? Sure. She wasn't sure which was showing more color. Her face from her humiliation, her ass from where he had spanked her so thoroughly, or her pussy as it pulsed for his use. Reagan heard what she thought was a gravelly purr coming from him as he stood and parted her ass cheeks and stroked downward, stopping to swirl around her back entrance before continuing down to expose her swollen vulva. Almost ready to receive my cock, he said, drawing his hand back and slapping her pussy rapidly with the considerable drawing back and slapping her pussy rapidly with considerable strength. Reagan screamed in frustration and pain from the stinging blows. While not as harsh as the strikes made to her bottom, they were fierce and caused a new kind of heat to begin to spread throughout that region of her body. Once more he parted her lower lips and probed her entrance, drawing forth her natural lubricant and coating his cock with it. All right, I mean, that's not too bad a story. I thought it'd be a lot worse. Uh, wow, yeah, that's actually like way more well-written than a lot of this stuff. I gotta say, I mean, it's stimulating. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, actually. All right. Give it like a 9.5 out of 10, I guess. Yeah, it seems to, and it, it doesn't, it doesn't rush anything, and it doesn't skip anything. It's just going along, doing its thing. I like it. All right, we want to, uh, you want to do a different one? Sure. Which yeah, I guess here? we can just rip it from the OBS audio. Yeah, we'll yeah, why not? All right, uh, just click on the next one, I guess. All right, Dirty Sex Capades. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this one's totally my style. Enter a world <laughs> of forbidden passion and explo explicit sex with a collection of erotic exhibitions featuring the first three titles in Malcolm Van's popular Dirty Sex, Dirty Secret Sex Capade series. So many S's. Pretty action-packed. Oh boy, it's a PDF. Blow that up so I can actually see it. Ah, uh, whatever, yeah, that'll work. <coughs> Sure, I'll start right here. This is interesting, he whispered quietly to himself, but the temptress heard and replied, Interesting is only one word to describe it. Exotic, erotic, sensual, slutty. Those words all work a little better. 
When he stepped further into the room, he heard her shut the door behind them. I need to change, she said, moving swiftly by him. You can watch if you like. Watch her, he did, as she swished across the leather floor to the table with the black sheet covering it. The temptress then lifted part of the sheet and pulled out a folded bunch of leather. Almost daintily, she shed her bonnet and apron to the floor. Underneath these, she wore nothing but a pair of white boxer shorts. Those two were stripped off. He licked his lips as he watched the temptress, observing her as she lifted one leg and then another to pull up her black leather panties. He sweated a bit as each breast heaved into their cups when she braced them in her corset. He felt his erection begin to surface as she slowly worked the fishnet stocking over her knees and up her thighs. Then, when her leather boots were securely fastened, she turned to him with a much more dangerous expression than she had held before. Eh, pretty good. Yeah, that one's actually pretty good as well. Yeah, I give that a 9.6.7. Yeah, I give it a 69 out of 17-year-olds. All right, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Dream Lover. Hmm, cover has got mistiness on it. Hmm. Like it's a... Uh... I thought I had it all until I met her, but she only exists in my dreams, so please don't wake me. Looks like it outside is so foggy that it's like she's pushing up against some outdoor glass, and it's just that sensual. Could be a shower, I suppose. I guess, I guess I should read it here, huh? <clears throat> so, here I sit on a park bench at five o'clock in the afternoon, waiting for my dream girl to arrive. Mind you, I don't know if she's actually real. I mean, real like a live person, or if she's just a frig, or if she's just a figment of my overactive imagination. I've probably already lost you as you are reading this and haven't even gotten started yet, so let me just clarify this for you. When I say dream girl, I just mean that, the girl I've been dreaming of for the past few months who's supposed to be meeting here me- <laughs> whoops. The girl I've been dreaming of for the past few months who's suppo- who's supposed to be meeting me here today. In real life. At least I hope she does. So why, you ask me, am I sitting here waiting for someone who I have only seen in my dreams? Well, in my dreams, she told me she is real, and she has been dreaming of me also. But, as you will find, I have a hab- As you will find, I have a habit of doing. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let me start it from- Let me start from the beginning so that maybe you'll understand that I'm not delusional to be wasting my time on someone who may or may not be real. Apparently this one doesn't even get into any sexuality. That's the script's right there. Well, yeah, I guess it's just the beginning of the story. Whatever. Hmm. This could be well written. It sounds like it is as well. Uh, wow, I guess these are all something. Yeah, electric touch. <gasps> Excuse me, my lymphoma's acting up. Yeah, uh, well... Alright. The problem is once it gets over there, it's so far away and so tiny. Uh, oh, yeah, just open up WordPad, yeah. I'll just open Slap up Word it fad, WordFad for you. Yes, please. And boost that baby, yeah. Whoa. Maybe not quite that big. Yeah. Just so it all fits on one page. Uh, what out of work? Ooh, it's gay. All right. No, it's Michael. You remember me, right? Drake's brother. Oh, Michael. Hey, man. I see you actually used my number this time. I was getting ready to head out. 
but if you would like, we can meet up tomorrow night. What do you think? I could get some takeout and bring it to your apartment for dinner. Yeah, that should work out fine. I'll be home by six. Great, see you then. Bye. He tried to say, bye, but the line was dead before he could spit it out. That was the most awkward date request he had ever had. Andrew got close and pressed his lips to Michael's. They both slowly moved backwards, until Michael was wedged between Andrew's body and the wall. Andrew took his hands and ran them up and down Michael's body, slowly. There was a lot of tension in between both. There was a lot of tension in both of their genes at this point, and Michael could feel Andrew's erection throbbing against his. He started to speak, but Andrew pressed his index finger to his lips to hush him. Andrew worked his hands down Michael's body and released his belt with one twist of his hand. Next, the button was undone, and the zipper was down. Andrew pulled Michael's shirt off over his head and threw it to the ground, and began to kiss down his body. All right, that's enough of that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. Solid, just basic stuff, but it's pretty good. Yeah, apparently everything's gotten better on here since I... Apparently. <sighs> Lewd perversions of a snow princess. Oh, boy. <laughs> this one sounds pretty dumb. Yeah, let's see here. Winter's freeze, winter's freeze melds the... With the heat. Okay. <laughs> winter's freeze melds with the heat of perversions in this raunchy and twisted erotic fairy tale, combining elements of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves with heavy nods to Little Red Riding Hood. Prepare for a chilly adventure riddled with sex, seduction, deceit, and murder. 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 <sighs> All right, you fucking spammer. As if. Let's see here. In the first scene, our protagonist, Princess Kara, is lost in the wood, cold and alone. To warm herself, she has just masturbated. Now, she hears the voice of a strong woodsman approaching from behind. Okay. Her orgasm brought her to her knees, and she bent over the rock beside her to relax and catch her breath. From behind, she heard a man speak. Fair maiden, you shouldn't be alone in these woods, especially during a snow as heavy as this. Looking over her shoulder, she saw him, the tall, strong woodsman holding an axe over his shoulder. He smiled at her through his thick, dark beard. Relieved to see another person, especially one so rugged and handsome, she smiled. Are you an angel? she asked, wondering if her eyes were deceiving her. Her. You see, last I remember, I was at home in the palace. And the next moment, I... The woodsman cut her off. The palace. He grunted and shook his head. His smile grew wider, but his eyes turned a... But his eyes turned a little deceitful. Casually, he tossed his axe down to the ground beside him. You must be the pretty princess. Yes, she told him. Pride slid off of her tongue as easily as the word did. Well then, the woodsman continued, I suppose a princess, especially, would never be so thankful for the help of a stranger. Oh, yes, Princess Kara cheered. Why, I'd be oh so grateful. She looked him over from head to crotch, then back up again. Happily, she bit her bottom lip and wiggled her ass in his direction. I do just about anything to get out of here. Wow. 
I mean, it's all pretty... It's all just, yeah, straightforward erotica, yeah. I can't complain about this one either. Nope, nope, I'm, I'm yeah, this is all fine. <clears throat> My friend's hot mom. Oh, this one's for me. Oh, I feel it. Ooh. He feels it in his tenderloins. Legal tender. But wait, are they 18 yet? It could be care. illegal tender. I'm just kidding. Like, I care. <laughs> Why was it? What is it? It's a written words like, give me a break. Yeah. I guess I'll just, uh, let's see, where does he even interact with her? I guess right in here. <laughs> I'll just start at the top of this page. Yeah. Okay. His mom's movements, her sexiness, had kind of mesmerized me. I was trying not to let it show, but when she turned around, my eyes were glued to her ass. It was too perfect. I couldn't help but look. And it was her easy manner, her velvety voice, and the way she put me at ease. I started to get a hard on and hoped I didn't have to stand up so she'd notice. I gotta run, she said. I'm showing a house at 1 p.m. She brought my plate to the table and set it down, then touched my shoulder gently. I'd love to have you around this summer. I don't want to let you get away. I don't want to let you get away. She gave a little grin and tone of voice, as if this was our little secret. I smiled back. You might, want not, you might not want to tell Tim, though. I don't want him to get jealous, she joked. I'll break it to him later, so think about it, she said, grabbing her purse, her lunch, and heading for the door. For a few moments the smell of her perfume lingered. She was a real woman not like the high school girls I'd known and lusted after. I ate my ham sandwich. Hey, man. Tim had appeared, hair wet from the shower. I got a fresh pack of smokes. All right, that's enough. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Now, like, some of these people, when they're asking for the auditions, they want you to read some part of the story rather than the sex scene. And some people get right into the sex scene, and that's all they want you to read as the audition. Yeah, I guess it depends upon whether they want to put slightly more emphasis on the sex or the characters in general. Mm hmm. Let's see here. This one's called Inherit the Throne. Against all odds, in the heartless streets of Milwaukee, Miss. <laughs> in the heartless streets of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Don Sean, the rape baby and son of Diane Milwaukee's <laughs> illest pimpette. Yes. What the hell? Make cutthroat moves after cutthroat moves to get out of her shadow and establish his self as Milwaukee's top pimp. Oh, God. Is this a joke? It's pretty funny. I, I think it is. Uh, yeah, might it be. must be. Got oh, Vin Diesel God. on the front. Yeah, here we go. Vin Diesel. All right. So, but... <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's gonna spit out toxic lymph fluid. The story of my life. The story, story of, of my life. Yeah. Can't do it. Can't transition. I know. It's not easy. It's not an easy song. No. I take you home and make my throne. <clears throat> Smoky black, dollar sign, cha ching cha ching. Oh my god, that's that's chintzy. Wow, <laughs> this is actually <laughs> what? Oh uh, man, we'll skip to some porn. Somewhere, yeah, if there is, is this somehow under erotica but isn't porn? That would be blowing my mind. It's just. It's just pimp pimp sauce. Is is this is just why is this in the erotica section if there's no sex? All right. Um <clears throat> <clears throat> He 
He told her to shut the door and let her know she didn't do anything wrong. Jackie had told her right, and he was just and he was just here to put her back in the stable under their new concept. Words couldn't explain how excited she was. Back at the apartment using a dildo, Jackie showed Joy, Roxanne, and Karen how to lock on a dick with their pussy. <laughs> Roxanne... Roxanne... <laughs> okay. Jackie showed Joy, Roxanne, and... Jackie showed Joy, Roxanne, and Karen how to lock onto a dick with their pussy muscles and massage every inch of it. She showed them how to do it in missionary, one leg up, doggy style, from the splits and easing back up to the knees. It's all in your lower stomach muscles, she coached, arching Karen's back up, helping her ease her pussy up to the dildo and letting her slowly grind it as she dug her feet into the carpeted floor for balance. Joy and Roxanne were naturals. They had it down after one try. They would have to work on mastering the splits. The next... Their level of respect for Jackie instantly changed. She wasn't just hopping into beds and humping. There was an art to her technique. Okay. This is, this is written by... Um, <sighs> Somebody who has a high regard for prostitutes. Boy, wow. Uh, okay, then. Uh, whatever. Okay, good enough. I, yeah, I, I'm going to just want to see here. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they don't even have... Urban culture, yeah. They, they don't want you to do a, an accent that's yeah. American Midwest. Just general, Just yeah. general, yeah. I haven't even been checking the accents. What up, who cares? Yeah. Twelve Days of Christmas... Did you skip a one on the top page? I think you... What is that? Uh, that's sexcapades. We already did that. Uh, I guess we didn't, man. Okay, whatever. We didn't skip anything. The one that I skipped had an offer pending already. Oh, that's right, yeah. Ooh, 12 days gaze of Christmas. Mmm. Oh, man, this is another one I have to copy-paste. I'd really appreciate it if they didn't just do that, but whatever. Yeah. It just means it's not the real author as usual. I know. Okay, is this a woman? I'm guessing so. Yeah, it's I'd, be. I'd start from here. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Slowly I stripped out of my sweater and jeans. I admired my frame in the mirror. The squats and crunches that I had turned into a daily ritual were starting to pay off. I gripped my love handles and then sighed. I looked over at the lace garment that I had pulled from my bag and halfway regretted even buying it. Whew. I needed the night to be perfect. We needed a perfect night just for us. Pushing my insecurities and doubts towards the back of my mind, I turned on my heels and headed straight for the bathroom. After running the water and stripping out of my underwear, I finally stepped into the shower. The warm beads from the shower head bounced off my body as I quickly washed in my cucumber-scented body wash. I was working with little time, and still, so much needed to be done. I still had to fix my hair, do my makeup, dress in my negligee that I had purchased, and prep myself in the mirror to get into character. I had no idea if my husband Bishop would even show tonight, but I prayed that he would. We had become distant since my mi we had become distant since my miscarriage almost a year ago. He consumed himself in his work, and well, I smothered myself in sorrow. At a time where we should have been leaning on each other for support, we were at odds. When all the soap when all the soap suds slid down my body and then circled into the drain at my feet, I shut off the water and exited the glass doors. I wiped the fog from the vanity mirror and then looked at my reflection. Alright, that's enough. That's all of it. Cool. Yeah. So sensual.
Almost all these are royalty share anyways. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, unspecified. That's all there is. Hmm. Oh, okay. There's a few. Okay, let's do these then. <coughs> yeah, these will be the last ones we do. Yeah, just another six. All righty. I think I'll do this one probably. <laughs> Oh, yeah, even though most oh, people God. who look like that have a voice like mine, but whatever. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's because they roid young. Yeah, so and then their penises get trapped at five inches. Yeah, literally. Their muscles grow around their dick, and then they can't properly stretch it and don't want to because it hurts. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Okay, so this is like a full story, but I guess also with uh, pornographic elements. Yeah. And this person it isn't really focusing on that as much. Okay. And you can start over here where it gets intense. Okay, where should I start? Get back or what the hell was that? Let's see, you got the mutant's head, blood splatters, uh, I don't know, whichever you prefer. I don't care. Uh... I'll do it. I'll guess I'll start from get back because I'm lazy. Yeah. Get back. A male voice, a male voice booms from above. I crank my neck upward until I see a tall figure in a jet black radium suit. He brandishes his gun at the mutants left standing, cutting a lonely figure in the storm. Who's come to save me? Where did he get a gun? I guess it doesn't matter. Thank God, Jesus, and Buddha, whoever he is. I flip onto my stomach and try my best to be one with the earth. The crack, crack, crack of his gun firing pierces the air. A sickening gurgle sound follows. I look up and find my mysterious hero slicing another mutant's throat. I need to get the fuck out of here. Gritting my teeth, I begin to crawl like a soldier until I hit an embankment of snow. There, I twist around until I'm sitting upright, taking, taking in my situation. I'm unarmed. He's heavily armed. There's one, maybe two mu There's one, maybe two mutants still moving, which is good. But what happens when he kills them? Is he my friend, or...? Deciding I'm screwed either way, I make a last-ditch effort for escape. As I round the curved corner of a piled snow, as I round the curved corner of the, as I round the curved corner of piled snow, I come face to face with an oozing female mutant head. Screaming, I draw up and fall back. Seconds later, the gunman arrives. He crushes the mutant's head underneath his charcoal-colored boots. You coming or what? He snarls. I nearly jump out of my skin. I recover long enough to ask him, Who the hell are you? That'll work. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, Radium Raiders. Surprisingly, many of these books are more competent as stories sometimes. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you might not want to close the ones we're doing. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I'll exit out of these other ones really quick. Why? Because they're royalty share? Well, I can... I guess, yeah. We don't need to do them, then. I haven't really been paying attention. Like I said, I've already clicked out of some Are they all royalty share? Yeah, I guess they are. Yeah, because we share. would know. Yeah, you'd know because it, it would be... On the list of six, list, yeah. yeah. All right. Fair so enough. All the ones we did before were all royalty share. Whatever, yeah. They aren't worthy of our time. I like money. Weird. I guess this next one will be your, yours because it has a unicorn on the front, so I just assume... The Unicorn Factor. The past is dead. The future does not exist. What remains is polyamory romance. Get involved in a complex intertwining of human sexual behavior for multiple orgasms and sudden sex. <laughs> All right. All righty, then. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. 
All right, let's see what it says here. Slow, expressive, and profound. The text was written by a non-native English speaker. Minor corrections if necessary. Uh, not if it's your mistakes, buddy. They don't, people don't get to wait until I finish an entire story and then uh, say there's going to be changes. Yeah, that's uh, go fuck yourself material. Because I way. upload individual audio to. tracks. We don't have to do this one. Well, let me see how to. stupid the uh, writing is. Here, blow it up. All right. Blech. I don't see any errors. I don't know what part you want to read. Okay, this story is shit because it's uh, just the endless, uh, pointless interactions of conversation with no development of characters at all. And then, if that's the case, then you would expect some kind of ex extreme sex, but he's not even showing off any sex or any avenues where interesting sex is going to happen. So it's just a big lie. Moving on. Yeah, like I said, I was like, no, nah, that's bullshit. The yeah. second that I saw how long the name yeah. was, I was like, yeah, go fuck yourself. I mean, I noticed that with a lot of these stories, there's people coming in that aren't the authors, which everyone knows this was happening. I noticed this even on erotica uh, story sites. And they'll just say, whoo, this is longer than I thought it would be because they're just going in and adding on text to the story. Yeah, here's this one. Okay. This is all right, I guess. All right, I'll do one voice, you do the other. Oh, I'll be so hot. Okay. Uh, let's let's see here. Uh, I'll do the Gerard voice, I guess. And the uh, narration, I guess. What can I do for you? Gerard asked, alluringly, biting his lip. How about a lap dance? The dark man replied. Dark haired. The dark-haired man replied, a cocky smirk on his face. Anything you want, sugar, Gerard whispered, winking before seating himself on the man's lap. He slowly ground against him, his ass firmly pressed against the slight bulge in the man's pants. I watched you suck that guy off earlier, the man said breathlessly, bucking his hips involuntarily. Like what you see? Gerard teased, rolling his hips before standing and rolling his hips before standing and turning around, palming the man through his pants as he maintained eye contact. You're practically walking porn, if I'm quite honest, the man said in reply, his breath faltering as Gerard dropped to his knees. He quickly gestured for Gerard to get back to his feet the stripper giving him a confused look. Fucking imbeciles, the man muttered to himself before addressing Gerard, pointing to the Bluetooth in his ear to explain his frustration. Unfortunately, I've got to run. Maybe you'd like to make a little extra in tips tonight. What do you have in mind? Gerard asked, though he would have agreed to anything this man had wanted. Meet me at the Hampton after your shift, the man offered confidentially, flashing a few bills to entice the stripper. The room will be under Frank. All right. Pretty straightforward again. Yeah. yeah. Pretty Frank. Let me be Frank. It's straight to the point. My nigger is in the sphere. Uh, hmm. How to talk dirty. Oh boy. Do we want to do this? Uh. I guess. Why not? It could be funny. It could be something. Uh. 
Let's see I'll, what this I guess is. I'll do it. And now, here's the fun part. There are seven types of dirty talk. Time to explore them all. We've graded each section from nice to naughty. Be warned, you might want to set up a hot date tonight. In anticipation, build up the sexual tension by whispering these lines into his, her phone in a sultry voice, or sexting him, her, with them. Either way, you're sure to get your lover hot, bothered, and ready for you. Don't forget to keep building the tension even when you're together. It's too bad you can't be here right now. You're killing me with anticipation. I'm getting ready to go out and thought you'd like to help me decide what to wear. Send pictures of yourself modeling various lingerie. I can't wait. Tonight is going to be so fun. This is me waiting for tonight. Insert clock ticking slowly gif. <sighs> I'm touching myself right now, but my hands aren't anywhere near as good as the real thing. I'm nothing but bubbles right now. I want to be studying. I'm in nothing. I'm in nothing but bubbles right now. I want to be studying you right now, not my books. I'm wearing that dress you like. The one where you can blink. Will you need any servicing tonight? I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's some stuff you can say. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, swapped for the lesbian. Gender Ooh. swap. Number 29. My favorite number, of Gencore course. Gencore is cutting-edge scientific company on the fringes of genetic studies. Both its founder and employees are a bit eccentric. Uh, cruise ship, extracurricular activities during the job screening should have tipped him off that uh, you can sleep your way to the top. He's willing to turn a woman to, to bed the last hot lesbian. Oh, just go dead. All right, I'll go get the other battery. All right.